Breakthrough Ruins, or BTR for short, is the fourth to last mission in Jack 3. The final four missions fall into a group I like to call the Point of No Return missions. The mission prior to BTR has Jack go through the palace ruins, defeating enemies, breaking down walls, and using the Light Jack wings until you finally reach the end. When you go through this final passage, there is no way back to Haven City, and the game locks you into completing the final gauntlet. As Jack and Daxter assume their fate, Damus smashes through a door above the two and saves the day. You now take control of the Ramrod, or the Slam Dozer, depending on the version of the game you own, which is a vehicle that's been in your sights in the Spargus Garage from a very early point in the game, but its usage is for this mission alone. Your goal is to work your way through the palace ruins, smashing into doors, lowering bridges, and disabling electric force fields by ramming into the towers that are powering them. When you reach the end of the level, probably the most memorable cutscene in the game begins to play, and the tone shifts, letting you know you're near the end of the game. For this reason, many players remember this level for its big turn in the story at the end of a great trilogy. But others remember it for an entirely different reason. What? Dude, no, come on. The gameplay aspect of BTR on your first time through is nothing but flipping and falling over. While you may think that the Dark Makers are the cause of your problems, or maybe the randomly falling missiles from the sky, the actual worst enemy is one that might not be so obvious. The terrain. Driving through BTR efficiently requires multiple micro-adjustments that your average player isn't going to consider. Getting through this level isn't hard, getting through this level quickly is a nightmare. In the earlier days of speedrunning, the level was so unintuitive that even the most practiced players would constantly be finding the car on its head. In the great words of runner Hilary Puff, It's kind of hard to tell. Uh if you've never seen this game before, what a good BTR is, because it all looks bad. <laughs> Practicing this level seemed like wasted effort. We knew what we wanted to do, but most of the time, it was much easier said than done. With that in mind, let's dial it back, and take a look at the skeleton of a route for getting through BTR in 2012. The route back then for BTR followed a somewhat one-to-one -one developer intended path, with the exception of a few shortcuts. Once you make your way out of the opening, you enter the first courtyard where you need to take down two towers to deactivate the barrier. The left is taken care of first, then the one on the right, since that puts you closer to where you need to go. In the next segment, you have to topple over two bridges to proceed, but one of them is conveniently skipped by jumping and boosting over a gap. Take down the tower in the corner, and head through the disabled barrier. You're then intended to make your way around a big curve in a small water segment but there's a little ledge at the start that you can make it up onto, which skips going all the way around. You then break the tower, turn around, and head on through. The next bit is fairly intended as you make your way through some zigzags. Two towers here and here to disable a barrier, and then two more here and here to make it to the ending. The final barrier has the most amount of towers you need to destroy to disable the force field, which is 5. And the order the game intends you to go in is very slow. You're expected to go through the pit at the bottom, get the towers on the far end, turn back on yourself, and clean up the last two towers. A faster route wouldn't take too long to figure out though. If you start on the very left hand side and jump over the gaps with your boosts, you can get three quick towers in a row very fast. You then lower the bridge to the middle, get the fourth tower, then the bridge to the end, where you break the final tower and finish the mission. This would essentially be the route for the next year or so, and the best players at the time would finish the level in around 2 minutes 30 seconds, but a handful of improvements would be made if we fast forward to 2015. An improvement to the water segment shortcut was found by Qatar by ramping up on a piece of terrain. 
Turley found a consistent way to break this tower by ramping up this sloped surface, waiting for the car to naturally face downwards, then boosting. Raccoon was the first person to standardize a technique where you jump into the side of the towers, which would save time throughout the entirety of BTR, using momentum to turn the car in the direction you needed to go next. Bloppy also found this wall clip at the start of BTR, which looks like a pretty huge skip, but the level doesn't load afterwards. At some point, we also started skipping knocking over the last two bridges for the ending. The first jump of the two can easily land you in the pit if you don't do it well, and the second jump, also named Crater Jump, has you launch your way over to the ending while hitting the final tower in the process. Around this time, however, a skip, fairly different from the ones found before, was discovered. First Barrier Skip. As mentioned previously, the opening courtyard requires you to break two towers in order to disable the force field. This was now skipped with this jump, using the side of the mountain to slide over the barrier. Depending on your landing, the time save can vary, but it's somewhere in the ballpark of 8 to 10 seconds. This skip was considered pretty ridiculous at the time, especially when Raccoon would go on to nail it first try in a marathon setting at ESA 2015. Trigger to a try. Are you, are you crazy? Oh my god. <laughs> really nice. Upon dying later in BTR, he had to go back to the start, where he would nail it first try again. Oh my god, don't, don't, are you crazy? <laughs> oh my god, two times in a row, what the hell? This trick was kind of the last straw that made a lot of people from the mid to low level side of things fall out of running the game. The collective thought was, well, I'm probably never going to do that, so I think quitting now is probably the best time. Having to deal with the awful terrain and now first barrier skip, it seemed like far too much effort to practice the rest of the game, just to lose it all to BTR at the end. Despite all the other difficult missions in the rest of the run, BTR is the mission that single-handedly strikes the most fear and frustration into the minds of its players. No other mission has caused players to quit or has prevented people from learning Jack 3 as much as BTR. This mindset is common amongst the community at large, including viewers of the game on Twitch. It might surprise you then to find out that there's a set of three players who think the exact opposite. That BTR is the best vehicle level in the series, contains the most depth out of all the missions in the Jack 3 speedrun, and has endless potential for improvement and skips. These three players are Goofy, Wotan, and myself. Goofy was really the first person to sort of enlighten the world about how sick BTR could actually be. He would grind it a lot. Like a lot. While everyone else was getting BTRs in the 220 range, he'd casually be shitting out two flats. He would develop such a great understanding of the terrain and the control over the ramrod, he was able to minimize stucks, avoid spinning out, and keep consistently high speed throughout the level. Oh, and just a flex, he would go through the whole level in first person mode and get fairly competitive times doing it. He would go on to find a couple of barrier skips that didn't seem super viable, but the potential was really starting to shine through. This one after the water segment requires a tight squeeze on the left hand side, but even if you manage to pull it off in a run, it's barely any faster. He also managed to find a skip for the final barrier, although the setup is incredibly precise and too hard to do in runs. You would have to have the vehicle go straight up against the barrier, boost once, then boost again as you hit the ground and hope you go flying 20 feet in the air to make it over. While he may have struggled a bit to figure out the level at first just like anyone else, BTR would eventually turn into Goofy's playground, and his magnum opus would come in 2017, when he would discover this jump. What you just saw is the BTR Oob Jump. It saves 18 seconds and is one of the hardest skips in the game's history. 
This skips a large portion of the level, including two barriers. The key to nailing it lies in boosting correctly. The ramrod has infinite boosts, but is only available periodically. So once you use it once, you have to wait 3 seconds to use it again, indicated by the lights in the bottom left. You need to boost to make it across the gap just like before, but you can't go up against the slope too fast. You need the perfect amount of speed so that when you're ramping off the slope, your boost is ready in the nick of time, and you launch yourself way into the air, out of bounds, and hopefully you land on the other side. Not only does your boost timing have to be perfect, but being slightly too far right makes you hit a wall, causing your car to spin. And if you're too far left, you'll most likely land on top of the invisible wall and fail. And sometimes, you'll just explode. Why, you may ask? The answer is, most vehicles in Jack 3 have a weak point on the very bottom between the tires and on the very top in the middle. This means a strong hit to either of these spots can easily be fatal. It's yet another negative that drove people away from the game. But Goofy was never deterred. He saw the oop jump as a challenge, and used it to push himself to improve at Jack. When I say a challenge, I really mean a challenge. Upon its discovery, Goofy was the only person insane enough to attempt this in a real run. And during his first sessions, he would nail it about 20% of the time. Runs before 2015 always consisted of having a BTR that had an average of two flips or so. But Goofy was slowly starting to reach a stage where his driving skills were so good, he would almost never tumble over. With his consistent play and his incorporation of the oob jump, Goofy's BTRs were getting as low as 140. When new time savers are found in BTR, eventually a push to lower the world record will commence. And the guinea pig category always ends up being hero mode. Hero mode is Jack 3's New Game Plus category, and with the run being the shortest in the game, you will typically see much riskier strategies in play. This is actually extremely common practice in all forms of speedrunning. From your multi-hour long RPGs to your 10 second ILs, the shorter the run you're doing, the riskier the run tends to be. With BTR starting at the 7 minute mark in hero mode, you bet your ass that every trick in the book is getting used. Hero mode has and probably always will be the most optimized category in the game some claim in the whole Jack series. And a huge amount of the credit goes to Goofy for essentially pushing the minute barriers in the category all by himself. He was the first to get sub-20, sub-19, and sub-18. Around the time he broke the 18-minute barrier, Wotan, a newcomer to the game in 2018, was quickly catching up and showing promise specifically in hero mode. He was even able to take the record from Goofy at multiple points. Wotan's playstyle is very methodical. He likes his lineups and visual cues, especially when he started teaching himself the oob jump. When his inner flame is lit, it's not uncommon to see a stream on for 8-12 to 12 hours at a time. He's just that invested in the grind. Goofy and Wotan would trade the record a handful of times through the 17s until Goofy landed on a 17-17, and Wotan landed on a 17-18. The world record was thought to be tied for a while until a proper retiming of Wotan's run proved otherwise. Sitting in third place? was me. My time, 1850. The gap between second and third place was insanely large, and I wasn't sure if I was going to do anything about it. I've never really been the type of player to focus on hero mode at all. I've always had my eyes on the longer stuff, like no out of bounds and all missions, but enjoyed watching Goofy and Wotan stream hero mode runs. The category where splits barely deviate and where a two second time loss is a lot. The mastery and perfection some people strive for was intriguing and kept me watching. After the record stood at 17-17 for a while, I had a talk with Wotan about a plan to push the record below the next minute barrier. With what we knew at the time, a 16 surely was not possible. It seemed like every single segment in the run was exhausted for time save. But of course, there was an exception. We went back to the level that always had something left to give. BTR. Wotan and I discussed the possibility of a 16 minute time if someone dared to go for the infamous final barrier skip that Goofy had found in 2016. People had experimented with finding setups for final barrier skip in the past, but nothing consistent enough for runs. The double boost method that I talked about earlier was so hard to set up and getting sufficient height to make it over the barrier was too rare. After a couple of nights where the three of us labbed things out, we would eventually construct the birth of the bounce method.
By driving up the stairs at the very end and bumping into the barrier while holding back on the left analog stick and maintaining low speed, the ramrod gets its front tires pushed backwards and will have its nose pointing upwards. After jumping and boosting at the correct moment, it's possible to fly over the barrier. If done perfectly, you would save about 12 seconds on the ending. While this was way better than the older version, there were still so many things that could go wrong. If the back tires clip the barrier as you're making the jump, it can flip the car over on its head on the other side. You'll finish the mission, but the car will land on its weak point in the cutscene, causing it to blow up, which hardlocks the game. You can also get what I like to call the thousand degree knife, where the middle of the car gets sliced as it gets stuck in the middle of the barrier, ending your run as well. I haven't even talked about the end zone yet, so here's one more way final barrier skip can be a problem. You can actually overshoot the end level trigger. It doesn't sound bad on paper until you realize that the developers only made it possible to progress if you're driving forwards into the ending. If you overshoot on the other side, the only way to finish the mission is to plant the back tires against the barrier and drive forward. The time saved for hitting this trick was too good to pass up. And so, a gold rush ensued between Goofy and Wotan to see who could hit it first, and maybe even do it on a good enough pace to be the first to break the next minute barrier. Runs would start the same way as they always have. Complete the arena missions, drive to the temple, do an out-of-bounds hover, get to the carrier, go through Haven City, and traverse the palace ruins. And if your run has survived for this long, this is where your heart starts to drop. As BTR starts, you suddenly remember that you have to put your hours of practice together into the cleanest possible driving segment. At the highest level of play, a BTR time of 122 is achievable. If you have perfect driving, you nail the oop jump with a perfect landing, and get a flawless first try final barrier skip. As the grind began, Wotan would be the first to strike. He would be the first person to nail both BTR skips in the same run, tying the record at 1717, getting redemption on that pesky retime from earlier. But there was still a lot to go. Two days later, Goofy was on pace for something really good entering BTR. After making it through the oob jump, he approached final barrier skip. This run was the first with a real chance at 16. However, as the run came to a close, Goofy would get an extra laser on the last phase of the final boss due to an enemy spawning late. In the end though, it was still a pretty big new world record of 1704. <sighs> Fuck me, man. It's just unfortunate. How much I could do. I think I got an extra spawn. Like, I, something looked off during the last phase. Like, I saw an extra spawn, I, I think, like, come up in the middle of the, like, the platform. And I think that's what fucked it for me. Getting the extra laser loses about seven seconds, so Goofy wasn't too thrilled about losing out on the first 16. This gave Wotan a window to strike, as he was also fully capable of getting the time. Unfortunately, Wotan had many runs on pace that could have been 16, but BTR took most of them away. A new problem we never ran into before including Final Barrier Skip was the ability to kill this enemy, appropriately named the Dark Chicken by the community, that tends to block you when performing the crater jump to the end. Since we now approach from a much closer angle, the auto-aim on the ramrod doesn't have much time to aim at him, so he's usually still in the way when you're trying to make the jump. It's pretty easy to hit him and fall down, which needless to say is the end of your run. Despite the increase in run killers, Wotan would push through and improve his time to 17.11 on March 17th. Finally, man! Oh! Meanwhile, I'd been doing some grinding myself just for fun, with the goal of getting a 17 of my own. I actually managed this a lot quicker than I thought, which prompted me to keep going. The activity in the category was also a big motivator. Goofy would be stuck on 1704 for a while, and the same can be said for Wotan and his PB. This gave me my own window to strike as I would chip away at my PB entering the mid-17s. A large contributor to my improvement was the exclusion of Final Barrier Skip until I really needed it. When I achieved 1725 on March 20th, I realized that I was actually pretty close to the record, and half the time save left to go was in Final Barrier Skip. So now it was time to incorporate it. 
I've been practicing final barrier skip offline throughout the month because I had a sinking feeling I was going to have to do it and run someday. The time was now upon me, and I would cash out three days later with a 1712. 1712, ugh. Oh, not second place, I think. I don't think that was 11. The following day, March 24th, was maybe one of the craziest days in Jack 3 speedrunning history. With how quickly I caught up to Goofy and Wotan, it was now fully in my head that I had a slim chance of being the first to get 16. So I gave it my all, muted the game audio, and put on something to get me fired up. As I started my attempts, I felt extremely focused, and 50 minutes would fly by very quickly. The album I had just put on came to a close, and I hit the jackpot with the best final boss ever done. 1705 was my time, so agonizingly close to Goofy's 1704. Not more than five minutes later, Goofy would post his splits in the Discord, and those splits set 1703. I was still streaming when I got the news, and felt mixed emotions as I considered quitting, knowing that Goofy would beat me to the punch, which he historically has multiple times. But I shrugged it off put on the sound of perseverance, and persevered. Once again, I found myself on a run at the tail end of the album. I was minus six, but I was going up against an insane final boss. I PB'd 17.04, a time that would have been a tied world record less than an hour ago. I was pissed. I worked so hard, but choked too much time away on the final boss. No 16, no world record. I felt like my body was going to give out from the emotional drainage I had experienced. I was in denial that I'd missed out on a world record tie, so I went to retime it even though I knew it probably wasn't it. Yeah, it was definitely 0-4. Alright, we're going again. I had to go again. So far through the stream though, I noticed a pattern emerging. Perfect timing. That was the end of that album anyway. One to Symbolic, one to Sound of Perseverance, one to Human? Is that how things work? Within the two hour uptime, I had two runs make it to BTR on world record pace, both of which PB'd, and both of which hit the Oob Jump and Final Barrier Skip first try. Despite thinking my consistency was a coin flip on a good day for both tricks, I was hitting them with a 100% success rate. I didn't think I could do it a third time. This isn't- this is insane. I don't- I don't believe this. I actually don't believe this. The pattern came full circle. A third album finished. A third one second PB. 1703, tying the record. I don't know, I don't know, I didn't- I didn't- I split early. I don't know. My hands were shaking on the fucking keyboard, I couldn't see- I think that's at least 03. Did I fucking do it? Did I get world- I think I got 03. Goofy had been grinding himself to exhaustion the same way I had offline. So when I tied the record, we both were so dead beat that we shook hands, called it a night, and vowed not to play tomorrow for health reasons. After our break day, the trend would ensue as usual. Many runs to BTR, and many dead runs in BTR. Very sus. Let's go. 
No, turn around. Turn around. Bro, that freaking spin. Yo. <laughs> Bro, that spin was wild. Get out of my way! I happened to fluke a final barrier skip on an okayish run, and surely enough, a great final boss would net me 1701. Now so tantalizingly close to a 16. 100% world record. 100% world record. 1701. And my game crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, it finally happened. And fittingly, I would get my best ever BTR and close out the run with a nail biter of a finish. Barely get it. Come on. I got it. I got it. Is this it? Oh, it's. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's close. It's coming down to the last hit. Oh my god. It's, it's flat or, or 59. A sub-17 had been achieved, but the saga wasn't complete. Since it took all of us to conquer Final Barrier Skip, it would only feel right once all of us had a 16. It wouldn't be long for Goofy, as a 1658 would await him two days later. Oh, please! That's the bot right now. Finally, Wotan, after a slew of close runs, would have a nail biter finish of his own. It's 16! Oh shit! Wait, wait, wait. Oh! <laughs> and thus, the hunt for the 16 had come to an end. The biggest challenge to overcome in all of this was always BTR. Every speed game has that big turning point where it's now or never, and BTR has been this way since the discovery of these big skips. To lower the time further in hero mode, look no further than, you guessed it, BTR. Goofy has found a way to skip over this barrier by ramping up this part of the scenery and squeezing through the right hand side. This can easily get you stuck though and only saves 3 seconds if done well. It's more added risk, but it might be necessary at this point. Additionally, people have recently experimented with trying to go through the entirety of BTR on the jetboard instead of with the ramrod. While possible, it's currently too slow to be viable, but optimizations to this in the future could happen. Besides hero mode, the next step would be putting final barrier skip into longer categories like any percent no oob. You would have to do it at the 33 minute mark rather than the 8 minute mark, so while daunting, it provides a significant time save for that category too. The main takeaway is that there's always going to be something extra on this level. What started out as an inconsistent mess turned into a gold mine for the very best to squeeze out as much time as possible. 2.30 was the best time people could pull out a decade ago, but with current skill and knowledge, we're down to almost half of that. Despite the level looking unappealing at first glance, something about it draws the eye. Viewers can't seem to look away when top runners are ahead going into this level, and I think a lot of it has to do with how smooth we make it look. I really believe that BTR is a fun and rewarding level if you decide to put in the time. I'm not expecting anyone to agree, but the next time you play or see this level, now you know that there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to my patrons shown on screen for hanging in during a long upload dry streak. I really appreciate it. As always, take care, and have a good one.